A good friend once taught me, if you fail to prepare, prepare to fail. And I'm not saying that I failed with a secondhand overland, but had I heeded those words, I wouldn't have been facing the three day long headache that I just got over from trying to disassemble, rewire, and reassemble this entire layout. Um, and I'm talking of course about bus wiring and power drops. And that's because this layout has been suffering from issues with electronic flow not quite making it, especially to the far edges of the layout. So I wanted to make a video not just showing you layout progress on what we've done to fix all that, but so you can learn from my mistakes and hopefully if you're early along in your layout building process, you can learn a thing or two so that way this is much easier for you to tackle. that aren't familiar with the second hand overland we essentially have two lines the top one is a small isolated elevated line that runs on conventional that i can also run lion chief on and the bottom line is all tmcc and is all essentially just one long flowing main line this thing goes around two loops and a large switchyard section and what i was noticing was when things got further away from our terminal section where power comes into the track over here the further it got away from that, the more dodgy the power became, especially on things like these MPC era power sucking passenger cars. And especially older legacy and older TMCC style engines that don't use power quite as efficiently. This big boy is an earlier legacy model. This Challenger is a older TMCC model. This T Pennsylvania T1 is older TMCC. And this K-Line especially is incredibly thirsty for power. And so what I was noticing was once they got past about this point here on the track, the power and speed started to drop, lights would flicker. I even lost power a couple times on the track because I was literally just running too many things. So how do you solve stuff like that on a layout like this? Our layout uses lots of fast track and that was great because it was easy and cheap to get and there's lots of these little sections that help you get the distances just right. Unfortunately I learned from SIDS trains that a lot of these shorter sections have lots of electrical resistance which is keeping power from flowing smoothly from the larger track to the next section of larger track. Especially if we've got multiple sections of smaller track in here, these were essentially a dam that was keeping power from flowing more evenly to the rest of the track. So the first thing we did was check for this and went through and I essentially welded these middle posts here to the next piece of track underneath. So it's not exposed. There's even a little gap under here. If there isn't, you can cut out a gap to make sure that the wires fit through, but you're gonna wanna weld from the middle posts here to the middle posts on the next one. And if possible, you wanna connect that to an even larger section of track so you have one longer, more flowing piece of power that will create less resistance to the rest of the tracks that are longer ahead of it. I did notice an improvement to our track after I did that, but it was still losing a lot of power when we got to the far end. And that's when I realized we need to take this to the next step and do some bus wiring. Our O gauge railway now has 50 feet of speaker wire underneath it. This blue marked wire I used for all of the common or outer rail connections. Then this clear one got used for the middle or positive connections on all of the tracks. And these are connected to the tracks by these little guys. I forget what this is called. Um, there's a technical name for it. Uh, my friend Arts Model Trains helped me find all of these neat pieces I'm about to show you. So I'll have the links for these down in the description, but these are super helpful because this essentially goes onto the end of the wire. And then that connects to these terminal posts that are on the bottom section of most large pieces of fast track. So these just clip on. That way, if you need to make a change, they just clip off too. Um, and then the rest of them supply more power to other sections of the track using this cool device. Again, forgot what it's called, but the link is in the description. But essentially, let's say this outer one here is power coming to it. So this is from the terminal, and then I put that in through there, and then just click down. And that holds that in place, that's not going anywhere. The second post in here, I'll have another wire coming up to the track to connect to those terminal posts. The third wire will send another set of power out of this to the next set, 
of the next power drop that we're going to put in and just do that over and over and over until you've got enough power drops to successfully supply consistent power to the rest of your line. So underneath each section of power drop, we've got two of these, one over here and then another one here for the common. I went through and marked each of these with a red or a black dot so I could tell just when I was underneath in case I couldn't see the wires easily um, to be able to tell which was positive and which was negative. So it was easier for me to tell when I was working underneath. So it's all wired up and everything's running the way it should be. I wish I had done this sooner because the wiring was actually really easy thanks to those slick little connectors. The biggest time consuming portion of this was disassembling the track, reassembling things, and also getting to stuff because underneath this layout is a bunch of storage and trying to get all that out of the way so I can fit under there and feed the wires up and through, that was a really time consuming and just kind of awkward portion of wiring all of this up. It would have been much easier to do earlier on in the process, but when we first started the second hand overland, we didn't have that many passenger cars. We just had those six or seven Pullman cars that were MPC era, and I didn't have anything else to really work against it. And now that there's multiple passenger trains, especially this new Daylight K-Line that's up here, it really became evident that this was a project we needed to do. And uh, yeah, super glad we got it done. Thank you so much to all of the help, especially from Sid from Sid's Trains and Arts Model Trains for all the help with the wiring portion of things and also for all of your support here on the channel. Leave a like, leave a comment down below and subscribe if you're new here. Thank you so much for joining us here on Datified. Been a ton of fun diving into all this O-Gage stuff with you guys. And uh, I hope that those of you that this is new to, that this is helpful. So if you need more tips and tricks on it, let me know down in the comments. Thanks again.